Deliverance boy, that lethargic spirit. Come out of the house, knock on the door. Well, Pastor, we see you later. I sit and watch him. Huh? I'm serious. That's amazing. And people don't think these things are real. Huh? All right, all right, all right. It's been a little while. Do I need to go down a little bit more, Elder Dove? The mic? Bring it up. How about there? All right. I think that was just me leaning, leaning right there. Well, glory to the king. Welcome to Feast of Tabernacles 2016. Yeah, it's good. Boy, them turn greens is getting away. I wonder if, if that, Sister Zaza must have had a good spirit on her on that one there, didn't she? Them turner greens, huh? All right, Deliverance Workshop. Glory to the King. Welcome, all you that are tuning in by YouTube. What we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to cast out demons. We're going to oppose the kingdom of Satan. All your churches, assemblies, and camps, and everybody else out there playing church, playing assembly, acting like they love y'all, acting like they called of y'all. And um, all these people, all the, the, the best and the most that they can produce and manufacture is memorizing the scripture. Because they don't have any power or any authority over Satan's kingdom. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question. Does Satan have a kingdom? Yes, sir. He has a kingdom. It's fully visible, working here and now, right on this earth. Is that true? Yes, sir. yes it is, too. Hallelujah. All right, let us pray here and open this thing up, all right? Abba Yah, we thank you for all things. We do humble ask and request the magnificent name of Jesus, Yahshua Hamashiach, that you uh, speak to us, your word the truth, open our understanding. As we oppose Satan's kingdom, uh, we bind every demonic spirit in the heavens above, the free spirit that's in his room, in the magnificent name of Jesus, and we also, right now, lose holy angels uh, to protect, to fight, to war, to defend, to be at our call, to assault the Satan's kingdom and do any type of damage that we recommend. Uh, we thank you for the blood and we're always mindful for the sacrifice that you have made for us. Thank you for the authority and the power that you've given real true believers to overcome Satan's kingdom and oppose all the devils, the demonic spirits, the free spirits that in this earth so we can be delivered and walk out our life in freedom and liberty. We thank you for the blood. Magnificent name of Yahshua, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, though, when, when you watch and see how interested people really, truly are. You know what I mean? How much really zeal they got. I mean, we have every excuse in the world when it comes time to, to not being on time. And we don't think that's a spirit. Hmm? We don't think that's a spirit. Leaders, y'all should never be late. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm the leader here, and I'm never late. Everybody, like, Pastor Dow, you just came in 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I sure did. 10 minutes ago. Hmm? The commander is never late. His duties require him to be elsewhere. Anybody understand that? Mm. I got more to do than you do. Is that, is that all right? All right. What we do in a deliverance workshop, most, you know, a long, long time ago, we used to do um, uh, deliverance workshops. When I was on international shortwave radio, um, long, long time ago, uh, different uh, AM, 
station. People used to come from all over. You'd be surprised how the word of deliverance gets out. Y'all not the first group from New York. There used to be people coming in from New York all the time. All the time. And, uh, and uh, the majority of people that are here or that did come, we don't even see them no more. <clears throat> did y'all hear me? We don't even see them no more. You're going to know for sure that these demonic spirits are alive and well and they're working. They're working inside and outside of every single one of us. And to deny that they're there is the greatest power that the enemy has. Now, the Bible says, and we're going to do a lot of this Bible says real quick, all right? But anyway, Deliverance Workshop is, is, is where we actually focus on one particular spirit. And when we do mass deliverance, we focus on a lot of them. But we're using the rifle method on this right here. We focus on only on one particular spirit, its kingdom. All right, I'm not going to be up here long speaking to you. The whole purpose of this is to awaken your mind, to rehearse in your conscience the things that you should have known if, if you never have known them, to ex expose the working of the enemy that has insulated himself inside of you and has been insulating itself inside of you. And so the word is what shines light and exposes his kingdom. Are you following? Sometimes you've made agreements with demonic spirits and had no idea that you was doing this. You grew up in Christianity. You grew up in one of these Hebrew Israelite camps. You grew up in, in any flavor of religion that refuses to oppose Satan's kingdom but calling men devils. Are you following me? That's a good way to alleviate yourself from attacking his kingdom then, isn't it? And not do nothing about it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over a, a few scriptures right here um, so we can comprehend the way that the, the disciples understood who walked and talked with the Messiah. Are you following me? Yahshua said himself, or well, the Bible says that for this purpose, there was a literal purpose. For this purpose was the son of Yah manifested. Anybody know what that purpose is? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, we can quote those scriptures all day long, but when we look at his life, according to what the apostles had written, we can tell what his function was in life and what he did. It was more than just running around quoting scriptures and saying words. He actually did something. Hallelujah. It, it made such an uproar and a stir that the scribes and Pharisees were scared after the devil because they had that, they didn't have that power. Do y'all see that we have scribes and Pharisees today? We got them all over the place. You know how I know these scribes and Pharisees? Because they do not oppose the Hasatan's kingdom. 99% of the preachers, I don't care if they're in the Hebrew faith, the Christian faith, they all adopt a hands-off attitude against opposing Satan's kingdom. They're not active in it whatsoever at all. My personal opinion is, is that, you know, there's either dignity, pride, because to admit that people do have the ability to have demonic spirits is also to admit that you as a pastor, a teacher, a minister, a leader, have them as well. And I'm not about to admit that I have, because if I admit that I have them, then I have to start doing something I'm comfortable with. So it's best for me to just tell you he sent forth his word and he healed them and delivered them and you're good. You wash it. Be clean. Because we don't have to do anything. You know just well as I do, especially after being, why do you think I talk the way I talk? I talk, I, I, let me see. One of the, another greatest things about the Messiah was this. He didn't speak as the scribes. He didn't speak as the Pharisees, but he spoke as one that had what? authority. And how does Pastor Dow speak? One that has authority. How should you speak? With authority. With authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, so what deliverance do is that thing that you cannot see because of the veil of this flesh that's, that's hiding on the other side, the invisible kingdom that is very visible through our actions and inactions. This invisible kingdom comes to the forefront. It cannot no longer hide because the word exposes it. Does that make sense? 
So anytime you see people, especially, I, I'm always marveling and amazed every time you, we start doing some deliverance, man, people just, all of a sudden they got everything in the world to do. You hear the craziest stuff. What, what should, should we all be here? Why wouldn't you want to be here? Seth, the enemy already starting to work. I mean, yesterday at Shabbat service, we said we're going to be here at 6, 6 p.m. Is that right? Now, suppose that I require for you to be here and I didn't show up. Would that be all right? But yet, that's the type of respect that I get. If I'm required to be here, you're required to be here. If you didn't get a personal pass from me, then you belong here. Isn't that right? Wouldn't y'all be highly upset if I if I if called this meeting at six o'clock and I didn't come? And it's my night. What are we gonna do? Sit and look at the wall. Hallelujah. So whatever required, you need to be there as well to be faithful. All right. So we're gonna get about this kingdom, tearing it up, tearing it down. The light of the word. The light of the word is going to expose this kingdom. Hallelujah. Yah is a man of war. Y'all hear that? Yah is a man of war. Now we're getting ready um, <clears throat> um, to stir up some stuff. Stir up some ruckus. Hallelujah. Once we bring Satan's kingdom to the forefront, he can no longer hide. Isn't that right? How many of y'all ever been in these so-called Hebrew camps? Just a few of them. That's good, a few of them, huh? I bet y'all ain't never seen none of this take place there. Anybody ever been in the Messianic camps? Oh, just a few. You ain't seen this stuff take place. And you have to ask yourself, okay, if we're not opposing Satan's kingdom, then we have to be for Satan's kingdom. Jesus said, "If you let me just make it simple. If you're not with me, then you are against me. Pretty much. Is that right? So let's go to the book right here for a second. All right. Just listen. It's more important for y'all to hear. Okay. All right. James 4, 7 says, submit yourself to Yah. Resist the devil and he'll do what? Flee. Matthew 12, 24 through 28 says, but the Pharisees, when they heard it, they said, this fellow do a cast out devils, do not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. So in other words, the Pharisees is saying that the only way that Christ had any authority to cast out devils because he was a devil himself. That's blaspheming, isn't it? Jesus knew their thoughts. And he said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And then he says this, and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand? Stop for a second. So people do not cast out devils because they are not a kingdom divided against Satan. I know it's a bold admission, but we got to let the rubber meet the road. Either you are opposing Satan's kingdom or you are for Satan's kingdom. And taking some oil and oiling somebody up and laying hands on them and, and praying that it goes away ain't going to cut it. Y'all got that, right? And then Christ goes on to say, Jesus said, but if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, then he says, by whom do your children cast them out then? Therefore, uh, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Yah. So how can you cast out devils? So a lot of people claiming they got the spirit don't have it. Are we using proper application? Are we using proper interpretation? This is not selective duction or reasoning or rationalizing. This is just straight out interpreting the Bible for what it says. Is that right? No need to add to. Take it away. Just call it like we see it. Isn't that right? And so he says, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God or Yah, then the kingdom of Yah is come unto you. 
So a lot of people have a lot of reevaluating to do. Their religious spirits are everywhere. But being religious is not going to allow you to, to oppose Yah's kingdom. I mean, Satan's kingdom. It just simply ain't going to do it. I mean, you out there have a lot of evaluating to do of your churches. Oh. The prophet said in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against thee in judgment you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh and their righteousness is of me, say of Yah. And he says, behold, in Luke 10, 19, this is Christ delegating authority, delegating power. Give me just a little more volume, Elder Doug, please. Um, he says, behold, I give unto you power. Somebody say power. power. Y'all hear that? To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now we got to ask ourselves a question. Are we being hurt today? Yeah, we are. We got hurt feelings, hurt emotions. We, we got diseases. We have sicknesses. We have afflictions. I mean, we just got to be real. We all hurt. I don't, know. I don't live in a make-believe world. No, no weapon formed against me that prosper. Well, there's been weapons that's been formed against me, and it's done prospered until I got it. I'm sorry. I'm not this spiritual type of guy. I can say that after I overcome. Not why I'm being overcome. Does that make sense? Sorry to embarrass you for being so real. This is the heritage of the servants of God and they're righteous of me. So Christ says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that's metaphorically speaking, referring to devils and evil spirits. Sometimes I just don't know why these translators just don't translate the way it should be. It just don't make sense. I have people arguing me down. That ain't what it says. Okay, let's go look at the word it come from. Is that right? Matthew 10, 1. And, he, and when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, we just got finished reading that he had given power, right? Did Christ have 12 disciples with him, yes or no? Yes, All right, well, they were just sitting there listening to sermons. The only story they had is, is, is a sermon on the mount. The miracles that he performed, is that all that they had? Being disciples. Huh? He says, look at this. When he called them his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Now, if I understand this correctly, I believe I do. Christ said, the works that I do, you shall do. And greater works than ye shall you do because I go unto the Father. Is that right? The greater works is because he was limited in his geographical location. But when his disciples get the power, you can go out and expand this thing. To all the regions of the world. Why is this subject so avoided? Why are you so afraid? Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ooh. Boom. You ain't got me up high enough, Elder Doug. Move it up more. I'm about to lost my tongue. Hallelujah. All right. Check this out. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Can somebody open the door, please? If bugs start coming in, uh, swat them out. And they really start coming in, shut the door. All right. And look what else he did. And to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of what? Disease. Now, growing up in this culture, growing up in this world, when sickness come upon us, what's the first thing that our mind has taught us in this culture? Go to the hospital. Go to the doctor. But the word says he gave them power to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. And diseases. Huh? Do we not have diseases in this world? Now, you know that the Torah said that if you would hearken unto his voice, keep his commandments, be diligent about it, and do that which is right in his sight, that he would not put any of the diseases that the world has upon you. And he made this proclamation. And he says, because I am Yahweh, your Elohim, that healeth you. Now, who does the healing? Ah. 
He does the healing then. We can't deny that the medical profession works to some measure. But our problem is, is that our ancient people trusted in Yahweh. They trusted in the word. They went there first. We've been conditioned in this culture, not being reared and raised the right way, to go ahead and go straight to the medical profession. Pharmacy. Pharmakia. Sorcery. We jump all over Luciferians. We jump all over Satan worshipers. We jump all over Hollywood and everybody else. And we practice more sorcery. Believing in Jesus. I believe in Yahshua. We'll call everybody else a devil and we're practicing devil. Don't expect anybody else out there to talk like this. You can't talk like this if you have no power. If you have no authority, you can't talk like this. Hmm? Is that right? Man, it's, 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 it's crazy. I'm going to tell a story, but it's not important who. It's just a matter that it took place. You know, we talk about biblical marriage a lot lately, right? And, um, and uh, I just got wind and got note that a pastor, he called me. A pastor did. And I have a bunch of pastors calling me. You know, follow me? He, he called me. And he says, are you sitting down, pastor? I said, no, I'm standing up right now. He said, you need to sit down for this one. I said, I'm going to sit down. He said, my wife just been caught committing adultery. And the person that she was committing adultery with, I mean, the person she was committing adultery with, his wife called me and told me personally herself. And not only that, my wife admitted it. You know what's remarkable about this, though? You know, I'm going to tell you how twisted and warped our minds is. You know what's remarkable about this? Because this is the same wife that opposed biblical marriage vehemently. I mean, with authority, oppose it. And then she goes out and breaks the law and commits adultery and practices polyandry. Ain't y'all good? Someone said, what do you mean y'all good? Well, just yesterday we was talking about it. The very thing you hate, the very thing you oppose, you end up being a partaker of it yourself. You don't think Satan is all in there? And this pastor don't have a second or third or fourth wife. Did y'all hear what I said? So look what fear has done driven her to do. Reverse psychology. Fearing of another woman. Didn't he? Ain't he got one. Did y'all hear what I said? And then she goes out and commits sin. Breaks the law. Y'all know what polyandry is, right? Yes, sir. See, that's the reason why I don't use the word polygamy because polygamy means multiple spouses. Polygyny means multiple wives. So here we are hating y'all's biblical program and we hate it so much and there's, there's other attributes and characteristics that follow along with her falling away. One thing was is she didn't she refused to wear the head cover. Couldn't even be covered from the spirits that attacked her. Hmm? Another thing is she refused to take off makeup. And so this whole time she's sitting up here resisting, kicking in her heels and stuff, and she's out here living dirty. And some of you don't be careful, such so is going to be some of you. And that pastor said, I'm so glad that y'all just set me free. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is with this spirit of y'all women think that y'all have this equality thing that y'all think y'all can do whatever man do. All you got to do is read the law.
the very thing that she hates, the very thing she opposed, the very thing that she considered to be a fault because she was going after her own book of the law, end up capturing her. Now children don't even want nothing to do with her. This is when I come in and say, look at the devil, and the devil is a liar. We can talk about devil all day long, but the devil just got finished manifesting himself. Utterly amazing what goes on. We become judges, and then we end up being judged by the very thing that we judged. I'm going to judge you. Mm. All right. So these devils ain't playing no games. You mock God's kingdom, you oppose his kingdom, and then you end up succumbing to the very thing that you supposedly hate. And so vindictive, not even a spirit of remorse either. Boy, y'all women are bold, ain't you? Some of y'all think, y'all, you ain't my wife, but I'll tighten your ass up. All 50 of my wives obey me. Period. Because I'm the king of the castle. And they ain't abused either. Matter of fact, my 50 wives... They love me so much that they're looking for more wives for me. They say, they say, man, this, this man loves so good. I should want for my sister what I want for myself. Ah, never mind. Got them on the ropes, don't they? They're on the ropes. Tear that spirit up, boy. <laughs> we better stop toying around. Most of y'all husbands don't even want another wife. And yet, be through projected fears. Did y'all hear what I said? The very thing that you fear has come upon you. You remember Job? Yeah. Remember how we talked about Job? How he had a fear of loss of family, loss of wealth, loss of life, and he got very thing that he feared came up on him. And the thing which I was afraid of, oh, mercy. In other words, you see, the spiritual realm does not operate the way you think. You fear something, you're giving legal ground, legal place, and legal right to, your, to the enemy of your soul. You don't have to see it physically manifest. All you have to do is fear it in thought. The very thought comes to your mind, and if you make an agreement with it, he's already bound you. That's called a strong hold. That's why you can't cast down imagination. That's why your thoughts are consumed by it every single day. Can't think on nothing else but that. That's called a strong hold. And you can't bind something that you have legally given place to. So the Bible teach us, teach us in 2 Corinthians to cast down every thought and every imagination and exalt itself against the knowledge of y'all and bring every thought. Most of the time, thoughts just run through our heads. We have thoughts of accusation against our brothers and sisters. And we believe them. We believe them so much that some of us, we're like on remote control. Watch this brother or sister doing this. And guess what? All of a sudden, you, 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 you acting like you ain't watching, but you sitting there and you cutting out the corner of your eye. What spirit moved you? Was that your thought that originated? Oh, yes, I understand it was your thought. The reason why it was your thought because you took personal ownership of it. You've been thinking that way so long, you don't even know you're bound. We don't even know what kingdom is really operating because we have accepted it as our own behavior. Yes, 
sir. I've been thinking like this so long. You mean you've been bound so long? If you're supposed to be active and not passive and casting out every thought and every imagination and exalt itself against the knowledge of God, but you're not doing it, then you're giving place to the devil. On the book say, give no place to the Submit yourself to Yah. Resist the devil and he will what? You don't got so used to hearing these thoughts repetitive, you can't even resist him to flee. Matter of fact, you don't even want him to flee. Sometimes you even say to people, oh, that's just the way that they are. Oh. And then they deceive you into thinking that we're wrestling against flesh and blood. Yeah. And the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, powers. Check out how it classifies these powers. Rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high place. What's the highest place on this earth? Your mind. Your mind. Ooh. Don't the Bible say it's mind a lot of earthly things? Huh? But if your affection is only on the things on this earth, you're going to mind what? Earthly things. So anytime your mind submit envy and jealousy to you, guess what you're going to do? Submit to it and run with it. Your step is going to mimic what spirit is in control of you, what kingdom it is. Your speech is going to talk that way. And the people who are uninformed, who don't know anything about spiritual warfare, because they refuse to believe what the book says, oh, that's just them. They, they, they always like that. Different speech, isn't it? Different speech in it. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 17. These sounds shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. Mark 1, 39. He preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. And Christ was very active because he said, and he cast out devils. Now people come to assembly, come to home fellowships. They go to churches. They go to mosques. They go to every place. And nobody is casting out devils. We're all clean in our own eyes. Yet we have so many problems, so many issues. We had war among ourselves, secret wars, in wars and in fightings. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain? That the spirit in us lusteth to envy? Ah. So we see that Christ, he preached. And guess what else was accompanied with his preaching? He cast out devils. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys. He called keys, keys, keys. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Wouldn't everybody like to have the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Let me go ahead and say this real quick before Satan gets you on his side and you want to oppose his kingdom. Now, don't get me wrong. Most people love their devils. They like being, they love those things, man. They want to keep them because they can't imagine living without them. You have no friends on this earth. You have no friends in the flesh here with people and stuff, but you do have a friend with the devil. Oh, the devil walks with me and he talks with me and he always tells me I'm right. Some of you want to talk to me in private. Some of you want to counsel me, want a counseling session with me. And when you do that, your mind hasn't told you that when you do that and you present to me what your case is, your issue, that means you don't have any answers. And you're looking for solutions. Yeah. Is that right? That's, right? That's right. But as soon as I say something you don't like, You call me pastor, 
You call me brother. You call me friend. You say I'm informed. I'm a good Bible teacher, a good Bible preacher. You say I'm all of that. You come to me with your problem. You want a solution. And I begin to tell you what your problem is. And the first thing you do is get offended and get mad at me. If you're going to do that, why come? Don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste Sister Carol time telling her about all your problems, sisters, if you're not going to do what she say. I mean, it's obvious. If you come to us and you begin to pour out all your depression, all your heaviness, all your trials, and all your tribulations, you know what's a heavy load? You know what's a heavy load? That stuff's heavy. And we got to sit here and listen to all this. And we have to, we have to actually cast spirits out of us from hearing it. And yet and still, we sit there and we listen. And we give you what is needful for the body, needful for the mind. And because that spirit's so, so deeply entrenched inside of you, you have your spirit man of Christ that's crying out, want freedom. But then you have this other spirit that's working inside of you. You come for deliverance. You come for healing. You come for all, but then when we deal with the very spirit you've been insulating and protecting, all of a sudden you don't. We don't understand. Come on, Come on, oh, we we don't get it. And you say that I'm a good Bible teacher too, preacher. Could it be slightly, just slightly? Could it be that you are more likely wrong? Could it be that the lenses that you're looking at things, they got hell personification in them? Could it be? Could it be? I mean, you don't want to go to no fool for no counsel, do you? So you have to protect yourself. You have to watch over. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because we're not going to tell you what you want to hear. We're going to tell you what you need to hear. Hallelujah. I know the devil is already stirring up. He, can't, he don't like this kind of talk. He's already in your mind. Tearing up past the dial. Everything that he say about me, you agree with him. Tell him it's all true. But he's telling the truth. Really, everything he's saying is the truth. Everything that he's saying, it is the truth. The Bible says agree with your adversary quickly. Why? When you agree with him, then guess what? He's like, oh man, they ain't believing this crap. <laughs> I'm going somewhere else then. Look at him. He's this. Yep, he sure is. No, wait a minute. It ain't supposed to be like that. You're supposed to be hurt. You're supposed to be doing an investigation on him. Hmm? You're supposed to look at him with a critical eye. Now, let me try this temptation again. You know he said all that because. Yep, he sure did. Said it just for that. Now, wait a minute. You ain't playing right. <laughs> but as soon as you start going, yep, yep, look look at him. It, it, he got even got that look in his eye. Oh, you know, pass down, man. He, man, oh, look, look, oh, he got a fondness for that sister. <laughs> Next thing you know, well, you'll see me. We got all these people here. You'll see me talking to that sister. See? See? I don't care how much in the open I'm in. I'm, I'm sitting flat out in the open. Then the devil will say, hey, 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 check this out. Hey, check this out. If you try to walk up there, he's going to give you a look too because it's a private conversation. (laughs) 
He got you. Oh, uh, no, come on. You don't only do that with me. You do that with everybody. And all these you think is originating from your own volition. Because you've been deceived into thinking it's you the whole time. We haven't discerned y'all's body. We haven't discerned Satan. More than anything, we just giving place to him the whole entire time. Man, this is this is a circus. See how real this is? It's very real. It happens. You better watch him around your wife. He got 50 and he's looking for one more. Everything's so calm. It's just sad, isn't it? Look at this. Ephesians 6, 12. For we, no, uh, Matthew 16, 19. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual weakness in high places. Matthew 8, 16. And when he was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. See, we have authority to drive out demons. Literally. It's been delegated to us. We can overcome negative thoughts, irrational feelings, habitual sins. We have that authority. We have the power. The first thing you need to do is fall out of agreement with Satan and fall in agreement with Yah's kingdom. I'll tell you what's literally amazing today, okay? It's normal for people to come to assembly. It's normal for them to come to church. Bound, oppressed, depressed, drug-ridden, loaded with all kind of fears, uh, life turned upside down, and sick. But it's abnormal to the natural mind if prayer and authority that gets results in Jesus' name happens. This world got us turned upside down, don't it? Bizarre behavior. Christ, when he came, he rescued us from the powers of darkness. We just have to take it. It's already there. He transferred the kingdom power that he had, uh, the most I did from his beloved son. He gave it to us and gave us redemption of our sins and forgiveness of them. He did. He redeemed us. Matthew 10, 5 says, And these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the cities of Samaria, any ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's usually where people start. So they stop right there. Israel. What do he say? Israel. What do he say? Israel. One more time. Israel. They put a lot of passion in it, too. Israel. Israel. But they don't read the next verse. And as you go, Preach. Okay, what, what, what are we going to preach when we go? Say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No, we want to know, what's your nationality? What color is your daddy? Who's your mama? Is that the gospel message? Is that the message of the kingdom? Huh? And he says, look at this. Heal the sick. You see these people preaching another message? Most of them just playing on your little sorry emotions. They tap into your hurts and you feel it. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leopards. As you go preach, right? Preach, right? Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ever see, freely give. And the first thing they go, well, you ain't never raised nobody from the dead. What about you? You have all these judgments on me and you ain't even did the first thing. You ain't even healed the sick. You haven't even done the least thing. Cast out devil. Raise means bring someone back from. In your mind, you're thinking, okay, they got to have a Lazarus experience. 
Elijah raised somebody from the dead and they weren't even buried. Oh, never mind. And that's something. Christ went into a venue where, where the daughter was, they said she's dead. And, they, and he said, oh, no, she ain't, she's just sleeping. They started, they went from mourning to scorning. That's how some of you turn. Turn coats. They started, man, they, can you imagine that? He just said, she's not dead. Ah! What happened to you being sorrowful? That's a serious spirit, isn't it? Hmm. And then he goes on to say, freely you have received. See, in other words, people have not freely received out there. Some people say, well, Pastor Dow, I mean, you know, that, that gift has been given unto you. I don't read nothing about the gifts that are spoken about. There's nine gifts to the spirit, right? Nine gifts to the spirit, right? I never read in one place in there that he says that, that um, a believer is going to have a gift of casting a devil out. That's authority that has already been granted to you. And your problem is you're not walking in that authority. You don't have to be some special who anoint. All you have to do is believe the word enough to act on it. Well, Pastor Dahl, that's pretty dang stupid to be sitting up there talking to somebody like you're talking to a spirit. It's pretty damn stupid for you to stay where you are. Amazing, isn't it? And these same people give voice to the devil by questions of doubt, laced with doubt. And these same people that have questions hadn't performed nothing. Christ said, if you do this, you know that the kingdom of God is going to come to you. And I submit to you, the disciples was doing all this. And at this time, they were casting out spirits. They didn't have one drop of the Holy Spirit. You do. They had the comforter right there with them. He gave them authority, and they didn't have a, 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 not a drop of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and yet they were rejoicing because the sick are healed, the devils were subject unto them. They went forth and preached everywhere. They cast out devils. Why is this subject not talked about much today? Why is this subject not talked about? Why is it spoken about so much, and yet it's so avoided? We sure can broaden our phylacteries, can't we? We can put on long robes. We wear big turbans. We put aluminum foil on our suits. And we look religious, don't we? And we can scream and holler and raise our voice, but yet we have no authority to do nothing. You see the reason I put emphasis on this? You see, I, I tell you all and over again, don't be eating off all these other tables because you're going to get snared by the devil. And you're going to stop doing what God created you to do. Which was opposed to Satan's kingdom. You can go in the old covenant and see all these men of Yah that had power. Yeah, they did. And they had the Holy Spirit upon them that will come up only on a few of them. Now he's available to all of us. All you gotta do is get past your fears and doubt and open up your mouth. See, the reason why you well, I can't do it. Say it one more time. I can't do it. One more time. One more time. You just told it to you told the truth. Right. But you can do all things through right. that strength in you. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus even said himself, the works that I do. He said, It's not me, it, but it's the Father. That is working in me. He said that himself. Yes, sir. And but you stuck on. I can't do. It ain't you. It's him that is in you. 
Christ got this thing figured out. Ha, you know what? Let me see. Hmm. When I created this earth and everything, I got it all figured out. I'm going to go and I'm going to walk on that earth and everything. And, and you know what I'm going to do? Man, it's going to be a beautiful thing, this little war we got going on. Because instead of me just being in one place at one time on the earth, even though I'm everywhere at all times, I can put my spirit in my people and then they can help oppose the kingdom and we still got them outnumbered. Yep. Beautiful thing. What a beautiful story it is. We can oppose this kingdom. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Huh? We got two thirds of the angels. Those of us Israelites that are awake. His kingdom's outnumbered. Y'all getting charged up? Yes, sir. That's good. <clears throat> so freely you have received, freely give. So when I freely receive something, I freely give it. Because this is about building his kingdom, not my kingdom. I'm in his kingdom with you. I wish I know how to spell you. You know that slang in the South for you? We, we don't say you, we say Jew. So when you figure out how to spell, let me know, all right? Isaiah 11, 2. And the spirit of y'all rests upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the knowledge of y'all, the spirit um, of knowledge and the spirit of fear of y'all. Now look at this. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of y'all, these are the sons of y'all. You have not received the spirit of bondage. So bondage is a, well, I just can't stop smoking. I didn't call smoking a sin. There's nowhere in the book that says smoking is a sin. What it's doing is not good for the body. We don't have the tobacco that they used to have hundreds of years ago. I never read anywhere where our people smoked anything. Only what they did was they burned incense in the temple, didn't they? That's what they did. But if you're in bondage to something, you remember, yeah, how many people heard me talk about my ice cream? Boy, y'all love hearing my stories, don't you? My weaknesses and everything, don't you? Still to this day, ain't had none. No, I can have some anytime I want. All I gotta do is just go get it and eat it. I'm not in bondage to it. What are you in bondage to? That you can't stop. The Bible says, y'all has not given us this spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out Father. 2 Timothy 1 7. Y'all has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a what? Sound mind. Strongholds on self defenses. All right? Some are strongholds. Are y'all paying attention? Yes, sir. I don't want y'all sisters back there to use these children as an excuse to be distracted. You need the, the greatest deliverance. Denial is a stronghold because it refuses to face truth. Fantasy is escape from the real world. The real world. Emotional insulation. Withdrawing to avoid rejection. Regression. Reverting to less threatening times. You know, you check out in your mind and go to some utopia. Another stronghold that is a self-defense that you've built up as a fortress inside of you. Displacement. Taking out frustration on others. Never accepting responsibility for yourself. You got a problem, but the person in front of you that you say you love is the problem. Displacement. Projection. Blaming others. Rationalization. Making excuses for poor behavior. In other words, you never own nothing. Why? Because these are strongholds. 
Some of you, if you even look at a person, boy, you ever pay attention to what happened to your spirit? What happened inside? Hmm? Some, some, some of you, man, when you look at somebody, all of a sudden you're doing pretty good. You look at person, you all of a sudden. It's like, what, what, what? You don't even pay attention to it. Sometimes you look at a person, all of a sudden, fire is shut up in my bones. You get seething anger. Is that you? Or is that a spirit? Why is it that you can look at everybody else, but you look at this one person, all of a sudden there's burning hatred inside of you? Whose kingdom is that? Somebody tell me. Then why are you giving place to it? Just by his very characteristics, the attributes, we can tell this Satan's kingdom. You ain't never done that before. Look at somebody and all of a sudden, whoo boy, all of a sudden you get that. Sometimes you do this. Whew, I just can't be in the same room. Nobody else feeling that but you. Why are you see, checking out? Self defense is strongholds. Fortresses that have been built up. And who can knock down that stronghold? You fortify your position. That's dollar good enemy, ain't I? You can tell I hate Satan Kingdom. I hate Satan Kingdom. <laughs> Oh boy. Those some dead claps too, ain't they? That's a spirit of heaviness. That spirit all in here, boy. Every time you do something, I see how keen in the spirit. Well, Pastor, I wasn't heavy until you start talking. Come on, all I'm saying is words. What kind of impact can they have? You talk words all day long today. Unless. Unless. Something else is going on. As the old saying goes, there's more than meets the eye. <laughs> Hallelujah. So them are strongholds of self-defense. And we have these strong goals of self-defense. We, we never get any better. We'll continue to keep getting worse. All of these defense mechanisms, which are strongholds, you can believe something so wrong, nobody can penetrate your thinking or mind. Satan has literally built it up. A big old fortress there. Insulated himself. So what are fortresses? What are literally strongholds? Well, they are fleshly thoughts, patterns, that were programmed into our thinking when we learn how to live life independently from Yah. Most of these are experiences we've already had. And we've just embraced them because that's just the way we've always lived. You've had an experience. You accepted a certain behavior in the experience to, in order to, what you call, defend yourself, protect yourself. But all you did was give place to the devil and burn, brought him in. And now you done come over to this side, the kingdom. You're still living and thinking the same way. Hmm. Mental ill. Most of what's being passed out today is mental illness is nothing more than the battle for our minds. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think about others? Huh? What do you think? Well, I think a lot of things. As he thinketh in his heart, you really truly don't surprise yourself. You protect yourself from others. At least what you think you call protection. What he thinks in his heart, what he thinks in his mind, that is the real you. So when you think that ill will against your brother, that's the real you. Uh-oh. Hmm? 
In other words, you do not do anything first without thinking it. Y'all hear that? As a man thinking in the heart, so is he. So when you do something, you are fully aware of what you're doing. Mm. Projecting fears. All behavior is the product of what we choose to believe. Every bit of it. You want to change? Stop thinking that way. I can't. Pastor, it keeps coming back. It's systemic. It keeps coming back again and again and again and again. Cast it down. I tried to, but I can't. Well, you're a candidate for deliverance then, ain't you? Because you just proved that you're weak against this and you have no power, so therefore, guess what? You told, you told us that Satan's kingdom has a fortress, a stronghold built in there. You've done what you thought to be y'all's conditions. You've repented. Is that right? You've cast it down. You've, you've done, and yet still, the enemy has a stronghold. He will not leave. I don't have bad thoughts running through my head. I get tempted with bad thoughts every now and then. When I was younger, I used to really get tempted with good thoughts. I thought it was good to look at a woman's ass. Women look at me in butts. Ask them. But they're going to condemn you for looking at somebody else's. Why are we the greatest judge against the things we hate the most on ourselves? Anybody know that, huh? <laughs> mm. Well, what about now, Pastor Dow? I ain't. You seen one butt, pretty much seen them all. When you get a little bit older, testosterone starts declining. You young boy, you got that, you got that cartoon. <laughs> you a bit old, you be like, hmm, okay. Yeah, whatever. Sorry, it's coming. It's coming. You really truly? That's a butt. Oh, well. Young, you're like, oh, Lord. She, she, she in a grocery store, putting that buggy, and all of a sudden you catch somebody out of the corner, you out, and all of a sudden, next thing you know what? She turns around, look you. That spirit led you, or did you do that? Did you do that on your own, or was that a spirit of lust? Where he leads me. <laughs> First step of deliverance is being honest. Not denying it. Acting like you some type of pope or nun. Just be real. I went down that aisle because I got tempted. And when I was tempted, I was drawn away with my own lust because I was enticed. I oh, man, I'm so free of that stuff. Even if I did, let's just say if at one time I said, I see a woman, I go, oh man, that's a nice butt. All I did was admire, that's a nice butt. And guess, guess, guess what else I did? Went on by my business. Where did I sin? So you ain't going to get me condemned. Boy, we make this life difficult, don't we? Man. Blessed is the man that does not condemn himself in that thing in which he allowed. So I allowed myself to look at her butt. I'm not sitting up there having a pornographic theater going on in my mind. Jeez. See how this word sets you free? Yes, 
Glory to the King. Glory. Huh. We cannot see what people think, but we can observe what they do. And what they do tell us what they think. I think we just done. I think they're real mad now. We done told on them. Then we do it. We told on them. Hey, one of the main reasons why y'all came here is because y'all want to be in the deliverance workshop. Well, I didn't know you're going to start talking about all this personal stuff. It is personal. Deliverance is personal. Sorry, what you do is a, is a manifestation of what you have already thought. Trying to change your behavior without changing what you believe and therefore think you will never ever produce lasting results. So I think we got a pretty good handle on these spirits right now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, somebody in here probably needs fear of rejection, deliverance from fear of rejection. Isn't that right? Hmm? Fear of abuse. Fear of hate. Hmm. Fear of demons. You ever hear those things go bump in the night? Hmm? You hear something? Boom! Something just fell out here. And you in that house by yourself, boy, it jacks you up, don't it? What I do is just go straight to it. Something might get me. The thing that's already got you, it's got you. And you ain't terrified and you've been giving place to them all this time. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You worry about a noise and this thing ain't got you jacked up anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all ready to go out the spirit of fear? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Let, let's get after this thing. Y'all know the drill, okay? Hallelujah. We're going to surrender to Jesus, all right? Dear Lord Jesus, you ain't no words you're supposed to repeat after me. All right? You know all my problems. They drive me, harass me, tempt me, and torment me. I have given place to the spirit of fear in my life. And he has strongholds built up in me because of my agreements through ignorance or willful sin with him. I now, by your word, meet your conditions of repentance. I am sorry for giving place to the devil and not serving your kingdom. I repent, I repent and I confess, I confess that I have served Satan, have served Satan and, gave place to the of fear. and gave place to the spirit of fear. I now loose myself, now loose myself from, every spirit, from every dark spirit and every evil influence, every evil influence and from all satanic bondage, all satanic bondage of, evil of evil in me, which is not the spirit of Yah. Not the spirit of Yah. And I command all such spirits to lead me now in the name of Jesus. And I confess the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Satan has no more power over me or in me. He has no more place. I counsel all of your authority. And when I call your name, you must obey and come out when I command you. You have no more power, no more power. Over, me over me because of the blood, of, the blood. of Yeshua. Y'all right? Yes, All right. Glory to the King.
Don't y'all want to get free of fear? <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right, now, I'm going to do the talking now. Y'all know the drill, right? All right, y'all just mean business up here in your mind. Let's get these wicked spirits out so we can enjoy this feast and get a little bit lighter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, I put you and all your allegiance on notice that I'm attacking you from my position in Christ. At the right hand of the Heavenly Father in the third heaven, this places me high above all your principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, thrones, dominions, over this world, and also over every angelic host and force under your command and rank. And in the name of Jesus, I ask the Heavenly Father for a sufficient amount of legions of angels, holy angels to bind all satanic forces, here and overhead above, around this building, inside of this building, that they do not interfere in any way with Yah's people from being delivered. For I command in the name of Jesus that all free demonic spirits in this place be securely bound and taken to the place where Jesus sends them, that they can in no wise interfere. I take authority from the third heaven where I'm seated in Christ and remind all evil spirits that you must obey when your name is called. You ought to come out and to go wherever the people or wherever y'all sent you. All spirits of fear. All spirits of fear that refuse to give love and refuse to receive love. Fear of death. Fear of pain. Fear of darkness. Come out in the name of Jesus. Fear of snakes. Fear of crowds. Fear of drowning. Fear of close places. Fear of nightmares. Fear of demons. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Fear of Satan, come out right now. Come out. Fear of loss of salvation. Fear of judgment. Come out in the name of Jesus. Fear of wrath. Fear of anger. Fear of temper from someone. Fear of contention with people. Fear of childish self-will. Fear of fighting. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of malice. Fear of envy. Fear of resentment. Fear of bitterness. Loose them right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fear of pride. Fear of jealousy. Fear of rejection. Fear of love. Fear of being loved. Fear of choking, fear of confinement, fear of disease, fear of ridicule, fear of lightning. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of loneliness, fear of strangers, fear of vehicles, fear of loud speaking, fear of women, fear of men. Come out, come out, come out, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out. Fear of pain, fear of grief, fear of emotions, fear of rejection, fear of rejection from love, fear of receiving love from being rejection. Fear of backbiting. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of curses. Fear of disputing. Fear of resentment. Fear of strife. Fear of rivalry. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Fear of insults. Fear of violence. Violence. Come out right now. Fear of shame. Fear of evil speaking. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of competition. Competition spirits. Come out right now. Fear of wrath. Fear of vengeance. Vengeance. Come out right now. Fear of vengeance. Fear of suspicion. Fear of being caught right now. Fear of being caught. Fear of being exposed. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of insulating for being exposed. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fear of corruption. Fear of abuse. Fear of fighting. Fear of rebellion. Fear of witchcraft. Come out. Fear of deception. Fear of antichrist. Fear of demons. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Fear of murder. Fear of rage. Seething anger. Seething anger. Fear of tantrums. Fear of tantrums. Fear of loud voices from others who I fear. Fear of malice. Fear of retaliation. Fear of verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. Fear of verbal abuse. Fear of being abused verbally. Fear of being unloved. Fear of being not accepted. Fear of being rejected. Rejection. Fear of 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 rejection. Come out. 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 Fear of spirits. Come out. Fear of broken heart. Fear of my spirit being wounded. Fear of my spirit being wounded. Fear of bruised emotions. Fear of deep hurt. Fear of being hurt deeply. Fear of being hurt deeply. Come out. Come out. Fear of unforgiveness. Fear of rage. Rage. Fear of revenge. Fear of anxiety. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fear of dominance. 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 Rejection spirit. Rejection spirits. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of oppression. Fear of depression. Fear of bad nerves. Fear of bad nerves. Fear of bad nerves. Fear of bad nerves. 
Fear right there. Hallelujah. Fear of mockery. Fear of laziness. Fear of leading. Fear of leading. Fear of following. Fear of following. Fear of, fear of submission. Fear of submission. Fear of command. Fear of command. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fear of lost of beauty. Fear of vanity. Vanity. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Right now. Right now. Fear of shame. Fear of shame. Fear of shame. Come out right now. Right now. Come out. Come out. All the way out. All the way out. Fear of nervous breakdowns. Fear of mental illness. Fear of insults. Fear of violence. Fear of evil speaking. Fear of rivalry. Fear of resentment. Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection from family. Fear of rejection from, from father. Rejection of mother. Fear of rejection. Rejection. Rejection right now in the name of Jesus. Rejection from the womb. Come out right now. All fears. Move. 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 Move right now in the name of of Jesus. Come out. All the way out. Some of y'all deliverance workers get with them people over there and help them get, get delivered. All right. Out. 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 Fear of hell. Fear of fire. Fear of flames. Fear of judgment. Fear of judgment. Fear of judgment. Fear of rejection. Fear of not being received. Fear of giving love. Fear of giving love. Fear of receiving love. Come out. 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 Low self-esteem, low self-esteem, rejection of self, rejection of self, hatred of self, hatred of self. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Self-bitterness, self-bitterness, self-hatred. Come out right now, self-rejection. Come out right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out, come out, come out right now. Come out, come out, fear of retaliation, fear of jealousy. Come out right now, come out in the name of Jesus. Fear of divorce, fear of divorce, fear of divorce, fear of separation, fear of a broken heart, fear of a wounded spirit, bruised emotions, deep hurt, unforgiveness, revenge, vengeance, seething anger, rage, schizophrenia, paranoia. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Lion, slander. Come out, come out, come out. Hallelujah. We'll be back on the air. We'll be back on the air in YouTube. Uh, Tuesday, 6 p.m. for the next deliverance service. Tuesday, 6 p.m. <laughs> Look at him looking.